Good day and welcome to JCC Sunday Schools in Session, where Sunday School matters to God. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We can really use your likes, your comments, and your subscription to really help promote the channel, so please consider doing all three. Our lesson is titled Obedience and Feast, and it's coming from Leviticus chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. Today, our lesson deals with the Feast of Booths also called the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot. The feast was used to remind the children of Israel of God's great work of salvation from the bondage of Egyptian pharaohs. The children of Israel were commanded to live in huts, or booths, they would call them. See, during this week of festivals, it was used to remind them of the journey they had to take through the wilderness. Sacrifices during this time were prescribed, and it included 189 animals. And the week was full of reminders of God's faithfulness while they were on that wilderness journey. See, the faithfulness of God was taught to each generation of Israelites as they sat in their booths. They sat there recalling the wilderness journey, and Israel was never to forget it. So they began to teach every generation about how God keeps his covenant, that he is a faithful God to bring them home. Let's get into the lesson and see what it has to offer us today. Verses 33 and 34 read, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. In verse 33, we see God speaks to Moses. I always marvel over this here. An all-powerful God speaks to little old man. See, the point I want to bring out for this is, God's words to Moses speak to us as well. So when God speaks, the whole world needs to listen. His word has timeless revelation. Paul tells us why we today need to pay attention even to the Old Testament. Let's read Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever was written in earlier times was written for our instructions, so that through perseverance and the encouragement of scriptures, we might have hope. We need the Old Testament understanding because it points us to Christ, but it also instructs us how to live godly lives as they did back then. So that through perseverance and the encouragement of scriptures, we might have a hope as well. God's word has something for us today as well. Let's get into the lesson deeper and see what up and is applicable to our lives. Question one says, at what season of the year was the Feast of Booths held? The Feast of Booths were held at the end of the agricultural season. See, God gave the names of the festivals to reflect the seasons in which they fell. The Passover feast is called the Feast of Ripeness in Hebrew because it falls in the early spring when the crops have just begun to ripen. The festival of Passover is named by the miracle of God skipping over the Israelites' home in the plague of the firstborn. The Feast of Weeks is called the Festival of of the Harvest because it occurs in late spring during the harvest. The Festival of Weeks is named for the seven weeks that the Israelite ancestors counted between the Exodus and receiving the Ten Commandments. Sukkot is the last one, which is the the Feast of Booths. And it's called the Feast of Gathering because it is celebrated in the fall when the crops are gathered. The Festival of Sukkot literally means, again, booths, and it commemorates the safe cocoon of cloud that form a secure booth-like environment for all the Israelites' ancestors in the time they wandered in the desert. The Feast of Tabernacles, it also foreshadows the end times. It represents the Lord's gathering Israel and all those that are under his blood in the last days. This will be the second and final deliverance for all of God's people. It also represents the dwelling in tabernacles for seven days. Question two says, what do we learn from the time of this feast in relation to the Day of Atonement? The 15th day of the seventh month was only five days after the Day of Atonement, which was the most important day of the year, while the Feast of Booths was a week of joyful celebration of remembering how God brought them over the dangerous seen and unseen. Although they live in booths, they were safe by his protection. How is this relevant to us? God is still watching over us, protecting us from hurt, harm, and danger. But we are forgetting to praise him for it, to thank him for the roof over our heads, 
to thank him for remembering what he has done for us. This is our obedience today. We celebrate him for how good he has been to us. See, the point is, today's Christian could spend more time worshiping and celebrating God. The first is when God speaks, we should listen. The second is honoring God through obedience and worship. God desires to be heard. He desires to be honored and worshiped. We should seek to do these to honor him even till this day. Now, verses 35 through 39 read, On the first day shall be a holy convocation. Ye shall do no severe work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer offerings made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. And ye shall do no severe work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocations to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering and a sacrifice and drink offering, everything upon this day, besides the Sabbath of the Lord and besides your gifts and beside all your vows and beside all your free will offerings, which ye give unto the Lord. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye shall gather in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. And on the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Question three says, what was the nature of the first day of the Feast of Booths? All Israel rejoiced was to be unto God. They were to rejoice for what God had done for them. And the first day was to be holy. It was to be a holy convocation. Now, convocation is the calling together of a large assembly. Their coming together was to be sacred and holy. It was convened exclusively for the activities of worship. It was not about anything else but worshiping God in obedience. He was to be the center of attention. The text says seven days an offering was made. Now, the number seven means completion and perfection. This process was to be done in a way that brought about perfection in their worship. And on the eighth day, which means a new beginning was to be offered with fire. The burning of a sacrificial meat with fire is described as soothing aroma to the Lord in Leviticus 23, verse 18. This soothing aroma represents the substitutionary atonement for sin. Allow me to read something real quickly from Luke chapter 22, verses 15 through 18. And he said unto me, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Do we see what Jesus is really trying to say to us here? He says he will not take part of the Passover until the kingdom of the Father shall come. See, flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Everyone will be changed from flesh and blood, from a fleshly man to a spiritual body. We have been given seven days in a week, and God gave us seven days to inherit this type of body. As we take upon the fruit of the vine and the bread of life, it helps to transform us as we remember what Christ did for us. But on the eighth day, the eighth day is something completely new. That is why we it's separated. It's a separate feast. And that separate feast, it allows them to remember the law of circumcision, that every male is to be circumcised on the eighth day. It represents the rolling away of the flesh, the doing away, the cutting away of the flesh, and allowing us to be set aside, set apart for the Lord. They were remembering their time with God and how it will be again as they dwell with him for eternity. We, too, look forward to that day when we are assured as believers we will dwell with him for eternity as well. Question four says, why was the great number of sacrificial animals appropriate for this occasion? This multiplicity of sacrifices was appropriate for the time and the nature of the feast for two reasons. First, it was to culminate all the annual harvest festivals and a greater celebration was expected. 
The second reason, it was a Thanksgiving festival, and that thanks to God overflowed in the number of sacrifices they offered unto him. They did not want to, to deny God his rightful authority of all the things that he had done for them. They wanted to show thanks at the highest measure for what he had done. Question five says, what was the purpose for the assembly on the eighth day? Although there was seven-day festival, the eighth day was to be set apart as a sacred assembly. Like the first day, the eighth day was a Sabbath, featuring sacrifices and a solemn closing assembly. The eighth day represented the feast of the Father's kingdom. We will no longer be composed of flesh and blood when that day comes, when we're able to go into the sacred assembly that God is going to have on that eighth day when we leave this world and go to be with him in his kingdom forever. We would then have our spiritual bodies. This brings us back to the kingdom that's prepared for us from the foundation of the world. We then would transform into that sacred assembly that would be transformed into our heavenly bodies and then be in presence before our Lord. So God be the glory. See, the lesson in this is that God did not reveal the Sabbath to celebrate his rest, but he teaches us something important about our need. The Sabbath is specified to be three things, a time of rest from labor, a time of obedience, and a time of identification. See, a time of rest, God taught his people the need to take time out. In this special time, we are to meet with him, to learn of him, to develop a heart to follow him. And during this time, it was a time to deal with sin. It was a time to start fresh in our walk of obedience to God to rethink the way things were done in the preceding week. It was a time to reflect as we rested and try to get our lives right with God. The second thing is a time of obedience. God did not simply want compliance to a list of rules. No, he has always desired a relationship with us. The Sabbath and the commandments were given in a way to the children of Israel to express their personal faith in the fruits of of life. They were expressing a behavior rather than allowing this hollow words of belief. See, keeping the Sabbath gave them time to build a relationship with God through obedience. This is the same thing that we should be doing. We should be taking the time on our Sabbath to try to build a relationship with God through obedience. It also did this here. It was a time of identification. The Sabbath was to signify the covenant God had made with his children. The weekly celebration was to be a memory device so that the children of Israel would not forget the God of their fathers, what he had done for them, how he had brought them out of the house of bondage. See, the Sabbath shows obedience. It shows covenant relationship and the need for completing the cycle of life so that we can get closer to our spiritual perfection to be near our God. This is what we do when we look at our Sabbath. Many times it's looked in the wrong way. But do we look at a time of rest where we can take time to get before God, to learn of Him, and to deal with the things that are contrary in our lives? Do we take the time to get in relationship with Him and be obedient to build our relationship through that obedience? Do we take the time as an identification to know that, yes, we are identifying our lives with Christ, that we know that we can walk with him, talk with him, and become more like him as the days to come. See, the point is a day of rest from normal routine allows us to focus on what's really important. And what's really important is our relationship with our God. Question six is, how were all the festivals of Israel alike? The feasts are alike in two ways. First, they are holy convocations. All sacred assemblies were done in order to honor God. And second, they offered prescribed sacrifices. It was specific things that God wanted to be offered to him on certain festivals. Verses 40 through 42 read, And ye shall take you on the first day of the bow of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and a bow of thick trees, and willows of brooks, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. And it shall be a substitute forever in your generation. And ye shall celebrate in it the seventh month. 
and ye shall dwell in booths seven days, and all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Question 7 says, what kind of branches were cut down at this feast and why? The text said goodly trees, and goodly can be translated as a beautiful or ornamental tree. The thick trees, which is uh, interpreted as trees thick in foliage, leafly shaded trees, and willows of the brook can also be taken as poplar. Question 8, how many references to the historic observation of this feast are found in the Old Testament? From Israel's entrance into Canaan until the Babylonian exile, there is only one documented observance of this feast when Solomon dedicated the temple. The point is, God provides for us in our desert experiences. Thus, we should rejoice. But we also see God's blessings should be shared and celebrated with others as well. Our last verse lets us know the reason for the observance. Let's read verse 43. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Question 9 says, what was the significance of the booths the Israelites made? The Feast of Booths may have been a harvest festival, but the reason for it, its name and its practice of living in booths was distinct from this. It was to ensure that the generations to come would know. They wanted, God wanted them to know that he brought the children of Israel out of the land of bondage and allowed them to dwell in these booths. Allowed them to understand that he was covering them and protecting them and providing for them while they was in a desert situation. Question 10 says, what role does this festival have in prophecy and what does it teach us today? The Feast of Booths looks forward prophetically as well as backward historically. It is apparently celebrated in the millennium. It prefigures the renewal of the fallen booth shelter of David. Meanwhile, it reminds us that every harvest season should turn our thoughts to the one who made it possible. See, the point is, in this verse, is remembering what God had did for the children of Israel. We are prone to forget, so we need frequent reminders of God's goodness to us. And God established a system so the people could always remember what he had done for them. Do you remember what God has done for you? I'm sure he's made a way out of no way. I'm sure he's opened doors for you. I'm sure he's built bridges over troubled waters. Do you remember and tell your story for to generations to come so they can understand how good our God really is? Well, that's all for this week. I pray that you've enjoyed the lesson. If so, please leave us a comment and like this lesson also. Also subscribe if you have not done so already. You are more than welcome to ask any questions and I will do my very best to try to answer them. Well. That's all for this week. Come back next week. Same time, same channel. Be blessed now.